What's up guys? Tom Ledeen here from Red Star Lacrosse on behalf of Lacrosse Playground. Today we are going to talk about the brand new Cascade helmet. This thing was announced like a week and a half, two weeks ago maybe. Um, it goes on sale three days from now. Today is Saturday, semi-final Saturday. We just got finished watching the Terps beat up on Duke wearing these. Um, it goes on sale Tuesday, June 1st. So we're real close. You guys will be getting these soon. Uh, Universal Lacrosse sent this over for us to check out, and it is much appreciated because this thing is awesome. Let's go. All right, guys, so I, I feel super lucky to have, have gotten this, gotten an early look at it, gotten to try it on. The thing is just fantastic. Um, when I first saw pictures of it, I really didn't like this sharp, like how they accentuated the fin. Uh, but every time Cascade comes out with a new helmet, I'm like, Psh, nah, man, it's not a Pro 7. Yeah, I love the Pro 7. My Pro 7 right there is still one of my favorite things in the world. Um, but as soon as I see them in person, I'm always like, oh, yeah, okay, that's nice. Cascade has just the lion's share of the market share for a reason. They keep pushing themselves to get better, to make it safer, to make it lighter, to make it more stylish, comfortable. I mean, they pack so much technology in here. They come up with, you know, names for the different technology. And, you know, this thing has just got acronyms and different names for every feature it's got. You know, the, their marketing team works overtime coming up, just, you know, coming up with things just to call this stuff. Uh, but the, the reality is beyond the marketing, beyond the, the acronyms and the names and this and that, this thing is safe, or it's you know safe the safest yet, uh, and it's beautiful. You know, it's just a beautiful helmet. All right, so where should we start with this thing? It's a uh, it's a piece of safety equipment, so I guess we should talk about safety. This is the safest Cascade yet, which you know that that's not surprising. Every new helmet should be safer than the last. That should go without saying, but. Uh, it's huge because Cascade does put a lot of research and development into their safety. And, uh, you know, you're not just buying a, the Cascade because it looks good, I hope. It is a safe helmet. Um, they've got the Tri-Liner system, which they're calling it. And basically what it is is, uh, you know, technologies that they've come up with the, over the years, they're packing them all in here. So it's got the, the 7 Plus technology, which I think we originally saw in the Pro 7, uh, which I love. And then something called the EAF-X, which is, I believe, back here inside, different padding. Um, you know, and there's so many different zones and different kinds of padding. Hopefully, I mean, what you should do is go check out the website because you're not going to be able to really see what I'm talking about. But yeah, go look at pictures of it if you can. Uh, then it's got the Gen up here on the, the crown. It's got the Gen 5 EPP. I have no idea what that stands for. And what is this? This is the, oh yeah, the 360 fit, these blue bits. 360 fit is kind of all around, and it it really fits well. Uh, I don't know how flexible it is in terms of size. I've got a normal shaped or normal sized head, average size head, I should say. Um, I'd be really curious if someone like Tahoka put this on, if it would fit him, or if they're still too small for, for big melons. Uh, I can't, I don't know that. My dad's got a big melon, but he doesn't live around me. Otherwise, I'd go test. Um, so yeah, safe. You know, I mean, go read about these different technologies. I can't tell you much, um, but the padding looks high tech in there. There's a lot going on. Uh, and then externally, the safety they they bump the safety with this thing. This is their, uh, I think they call it the Jawbone. Um, as you remember on the S, it had one of these pieces of plastic. They've doubled up. And what this does is distribute impact force. So it's a harder plastic. And I guess having two here, maybe ball hits, uh, helmet to helmet, you know, even stick checks, it um, having two better dis distributes that impact force, which is a good thing. Uh, and it's cool, you know, and, and the really cool part about the, the new one, and I'll get into customization later, but on the S, you couldn't, change the color of the the jaw piece it was always black and this one it's got three different color choices so you can make it white black or gray which i just played with the customizer a little bit 
and I had an all black helmet and this jaw piece, the double jaw piece was white. It looked really sick. So that's awesome. Um, we'll get into the, the customization a little bit later. I think that's it for safety. It's, it's a safe helmet. It's probably the safest on the market. Um, I don't know yet. I don't know how it compares to the Rival or the, um, what's the other one? STX Rival, Warrior Burn. I've never, still never had a Warrior Burn on my head. Uh, I talked to the guys at Warrior or someone at Warrior once and they were like, yeah, yeah, we're going to send you one. Never got here. So hopefully, uh, hopefully someday I can see one in person. I really like the way they look. I like the, this blue one back here right over my shoulder is a rival. No, nope. yeah, STX rival. Really sweet helmet. I like the way it looks. A lot of, a lot of teams are, are wearing them. Uh, it's got the, the rounder look. This is a little more streamlined, a little more bike helmet-esque. Let's move on to comfort. Comfort. This is, uh, it is a very comfortable helmet. So I put it on, just like, oh yeah, this, this is fine. This, this feels good on my head. It's got a distributed weight system, so it, it, they work from the crown of the head and work outward and downward. So it, it kind of sits on the crown perfectly, um, which, I, I mean, I've had helmets that were kind of top heavy, kind of back heavy, uh, you know, and you run with a head of steam and a front heavy helmet, you're going to, you're going to end up face planting, you know, if you're, if you're leaning too far forward, going too fast. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, their vents, the vents just keep getting bigger, which is awesome. Uh, and their back vent, which it was really cool. I, the S might have been the first one to have the, the back vent. Um, they've increased the size, and apparently this has two times the breathability, I'm guessing, over the S, right? That's, that's probably their benchmark, their previous helmet. Um, so two times the breathability is huge. You know, we play in California where it's hot a lot most often um, but still when you're playing in the cold and your head gets super hot and you know you, you got steam coming out of the vents you really do want that breathability throughout you don't want your head cooking especially if we just bought my kid a, a brand new s i bought an s for my kid for his uh, upcoming season and literally i think it was a day later the the xrs was announced it's like well yeah that's exactly what happens i don't know what i expected it's been what the s has been out for four or five years um, and that, I think that's about how Cascade does it. Every four to five years, they come out with a new one. So comfort, it's crazy comfortable, and it, it really is. I mean, weight-wise, super well distributed. I mean, you hardly feel it on your head. Beautiful. So it's got it's got the vision bar, which is we saw this. I believe we saw it introduced on the S. Uh, it's a really nice feature. I think it's about half the height, maybe a little, a little more than half the height of the other bars, just to increase your your vision. The um, they've extended the peripheral sight lines by 22%. So they say. I'm sure, that's kind of relative, right? People with really close together eyeballs, have less peripheral vision. Guys with those hammerhead shark looking eyes or out on the side of their head, they probably have great peripheral vision, but less so here. But, you know, that the fact that they have increased, they probably do a lot of testing with, you know, what can you see, like, Looking side to side, I see both hands still. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm not moving my head, I'm just moving my eyes. Okay, anyway. So yeah, good peripheral vision. That's important. No more blind sides, right? No more defensive defenseless player just getting jacked on a ground ball because you're you're looking down so that is comfort safety uh, and now you know what's what seems to be most important to lacrosse players is style unfortunately i get it though uh, this is a style and helmet for sure cascade really really has cornered the market in terms of um the the lacrosse 
population in terms of what they think is styling and what they don't. Every time a new helmet comes on the market from a different manufacturer, kids just jump all over it and just, it's so dumb to me. I mean, competition in the marketplace, I've talked about it on my channel since the very beginning. We need it, we want it, it's how products get better. Um, so to try and dissuade companies from making helmets is just stupid. And if you are a part of that, if you're slamming some other company for introducing a new helmet, stop that. It's the reason we're getting better and better Cascades, because they have to fight for their market share. They have to fight to maintain the market share they have. We want that. Um, so, style. Yeah, man. I mean, the fin, when the fin was first introduced on the CPXR, I loved it. I thought it was the coolest thing. Some people hated it. Eventually, everybody fell in love with it. And now they've just increased it. Like, it is sharp now. This thing sticks out kind of flat right here. And then it's got it, it, the fin. It starts all the way over here from the side. It's got this little flat section right here that carries over into the fin. And it's cool for, uh, for decals, which you see here on the, the Maryland helmet. Kind of starts here and then flattens out and just sits on this shelf around the whole thing. Um, the problem I see here is that you guys who have a lot of stickers on your helmets, you know, in and out of the bag. Um, decals are really only good for a season because, you know, the stuff in your bag hits it, rips it off, and eventually, you know, everything's falling off. Uh, and if you leave a helmet over time, like in your garage over the summer and it gets hot, sometimes these things just start to curl up and off. But, I mean, your teams should be buying new decals. If you, if you have the same helmet, they should be replacing your decals every season or at least giving you the option to replace them. They're not expensive. Uh, one thing that I have issue with is they've really decreased the amount of space where you can put a decal. So if you look at the Burn and the Rival, uh, they've kind of increased the space. And I mean, I love team logos. I love this kind of stuff, right? This looks cool, but it's, it's cut. You know, it's cut, the S is cut off, the P is cut off. The T is cut off over here. I mean, there's really, what, two inches of space here. And it's not a flat two inches. There's some some curves and some protrusions here. Uh, it, it really looks like a difficult helmet to design decals for. You know, it's a little flat spot here, tiny little Maryland sticker. There's not a lot of room here. Uh, the Mohawk area, plenty of room here to do things. You know, this Maryland helmet opted to go with the center stripes or center decals. Um, those fit nicely. Those look good, uh, but nothing here. I think this is probably what we'll see most commonly. Um, this, the visor stickers are gonna be cool because they can come from here and then kind of snake up this way. And if they get gradually thinner, because this, this piece here gets thinner and thinner and thinner, uh, that'll look really cool. It'll almost look like horns. I like that. Uh, there are, like I said, you can customize the chin piece. So apparently there are there are five customizable zones, uh, which if you've ever customized a, a rival or a burn, they kind of outdid Cascade in terms of what you could do, what you know, how many looks you could you could come up with. But this, the XRS, has 9.6 million combos. I don't know how that compares to the other two helmets on the market. Uh, but 9.6 million is a ton. Um, I played with the customizer for a while. I was like, yeah, dude, there's there's a lot you can do. Universal is going to be selling these, I believe, starting Tuesday, June 1st. Um, I think it's Tuesday. It doesn't matter. But they have a customizer, so you'll be able to, to customize your, your, your XRS the way you want it, your team, whatever, team sales. Get everybody looking really fresh. Um, and then order them. I believe you can order them starting June, or starting in June 1st. I should really go grab our S just to compare and contrast a little bit. All right, so I am gonna put the S on. This is my kid's new S. Oh yeah, for sure. It is not a bad helmet. Not an uncomfortable helmet, but it's not as comfortable as the XRS, like right in the forehead. The weight distribution's good, it feels good. Sight lines aren't, are fine. So yeah, the, the back vent on the S is 
It's two holes, two exhausts, right? And the, the XRS has the two, but then in the center it's open as well. So you're gonna get more breathability. The vents on both, they look like they're about the same size. Shaped a little different. Uh, the front vents, the front side vents are bigger on the, on the XRS than the S. I don't know if, you might not be able to see this S very well. It's very, very dark. It's a sick helmet though. The um, SPR fit, it's the adjustable bit on the back. They've redesigned that a little. Yeah, it's it's a new sh new shape, new style. Uh, but yeah, so if you look at the side of the S, you know, and when the S came out, I thought, man, they're really shrinking this area. Uh, but it's it's considerably bigger than this, which you know it is what it is. If you look at if you look at the rival. I don't remember who sent me the rival. I think it was STX actually, but they were going to send me a, a Duke one. It would have been really cool to have a Duke rival. They sent me the Duke blue, but it, it didn't have the decals. Um, that'd be cool because this is the game we watched today, right? But yeah, if you look at the, the rival's side, well, it's kind of interrupted by this snap, but that's a, that's a pretty big area. Uh, one good thing I would say about the decreased size of, of decal area is that it's going to keep teams looking the same. So a lot of on helmets that have a big, you know, big space, you're going to get like, at least what I've noticed, kids sometimes put them too far to the back, sometimes too far forward, sometimes tilted this way, sometimes tilted this way. Sometimes they hold their helmet like this, is what it looks like on my head. So then they orient it this way. Some guys do it on the table. So it's oriented this way. This gives you less options. So I think you'll have more, um, more homogeneity, more consistency in your team. Uh, everyone kind of has their decals on the same way. If you do it yourself, some ADs and some head coaches do it for everybody. Uh, equipment managers, some teams have equipment managers. Most don't. All right, guys, so that is all I have on the Cascade XRS. Uh, I am a huge fan. You know, it kind of has it all. Protection, comfort, style. Not much else you would want, really, right? Anyway, follow the links in the description to Universal. Go buy one, customize it, buy one, buy 25, whatever, whatever you need for your team. Uh, you won't be disappointed. This thing's great. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.